Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for this month's Object Talk. My name is Emma and I'm the Engagement Programme Manager here at the Jewish Museum London. The object I have chosen for this month's talk is one of over 40,000 objects in the Jewish Museum London's designated collection that shows the diversity of Jewish life and history. And our programmes exist to explore connections between faiths and cultures. This month, Jewish people around the world will be celebrating the festival of Passover or Pesach. This festival remembers the Jewish people fleeing slavery in Egypt and crossing over the Red Sea. It comes from the Torah and is remembered every year at a Seder meal. The Seder meal is where symbolic foods are eaten to retell the story of Passover in a very sensory way. And many of these symbolic foods sit on a Seder plate. We have in our collection many examples of Seder plates. For this month's object talk, I have chosen one in particular that I would like to share with you. This beautiful Seder plate here. This plate has sunken panels around the outside and in these are different illustrations that are very vibrant. We have Moses, we have his brother Aaron, King David and Solomon. The two larger illustrations, let's take a close look at the first one, show firstly a scene showing um, Joseph being sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers. This is a very fitting um, section from the Torah to have decorating a Seder plate as it shows at the beginning of the Jewish people's link to Egypt and the first Jewish person forced into slavery there. And when the Jewish people left Egypt during the Passover, they took with them the body of Joseph. The second larger panel has in it a illustration of a Seder meal itself. And then the two largest um, sunken panels at the two sides have floral decorations in them in bold blues and um, reds, yellows, and of course greens for the leaves. However, the largest section of the Seder plate is dedicated to a passage of Hebrew text. This text is from the Passover order of service, starting with the blessing that is said over the wine. This plate has a diameter of 49 centimetres, and so of its large size and its bright colours, it is an object that really stands out in our Judaism A Living Faith Gallery, where it can currently be viewed. However, there is a mystery behind this object, and that is, when and where was it made? The figures in the illustrations and their dress suggest that this is a very early Passover Seder dish. In the 1974 catalogue of the Jewish Museum London, it was thought that this um, Seder plate was Italian, and it was attributed to Isaac Cohen of Pissarro. So this would date the Seder plate to around 1630 to 40, making it a very rare and early object. However, it seems that is what we are intended to think, because more recent studies suggest that this object is an early example of fake Judaica. It is more likely that this Seder plate was made in the late 19th century, but designed to look like it was made centuries earlier. There is still um, the possibility that it was made in Italy. However, another theory comes from the director of the Jewish Historical Museum in Amsterdam. And that is that the plate could have been made in The Hague and so be a Dutch Seder plate. Although he also suggests that it could be from an English pottery. So there is a mystery about its origins. Its estimated date of manufacture is now thought to be around 1865 to 1890, but there is still a difference of opinion about whether we are looking at an Italian plate, a Dutch plate, or an English plate. The date of manufacture has been worked out because it is thought that the illustrations are influenced by an 1864 Haggadah, meaning that it would need to be manufactured after that date. In fact, there are 28 similar Seder plates that survive in museums and private collections. They are known as Majolica Seder plates, which is a style of pottery where lead glazes are added to unfired clay. It creates really brightly colored items that are very hard wearing. These 28 plates that survive share the design of having Hebrew text in the center and figures and scenes decorating the outside. 
So another of these plates can be seen in this image here. And this is another plate from the collection of the Jewish Museum in London. It is very similar in design. We have very similar scenes, a similar passage inside, floral decorations, an image of a Seder meal, extremely similar. And this plate was originally dated to Italy and again to Pizarro. And it was thought to be made around 1652. We have another example of a plate here that comes from the collection of the Jewish Museum of New York. This was originally thought to be made in the 13th century in Spain, but has since been revealed to also have been made in the 19th century. Many of this collection of 28 similar plates have a date marked on them, which ranges from around the 16th century to the 19th century. But how much can we trust the dates that are written onto these Seder plates? Because it's highly likely that these are fake dates, making the Passover plates purposeful forgeries. This raises a very interesting question in itself of why was there such a market for historic Passover plates that people exploited this by forging their own Seder plates to sell on? In the 19th century, there was a real interest in preserving Jewish heritage and a particular fascination with Murano Jews. These were people who had needed to hide their Jewish identity to be able to live freely. The Spanish Inquisition only ended in 1834, and from the 15th century it had been active in suppressing Judaism and other religious beliefs aside from Catholicism. Whilst its name suggests that it was limited to Spain, its reach extended through Portugal and um, the lands that these countries held in Asia, Africa and the Americas. It also for a time extended to parts of Italy and the Netherlands. In countries where the Inquisition was not so active, there was still a need for Jewish people to hide their identity. For example, in England, it had been illegal for people to be Jewish here from 1290 to 1656. But even after this date, Jewish people did not have the same rights as their Christian neighbours. This didn't come until the 19th century. So there are examples of individuals needing to continue to be openly Christian in public but Jewish in practice behind closed doors. And this lasted for long after 1656. In the 19th century, there was this real fascination with earlier communities who had needed to hide their identity and a desire to preserve the heritage of Jewish people that had needed to be so hidden from history, to bring their stories to light. And with this demand for Judaica, some people saw an opportunity and there was a growth in the production of fake Judaica, such as this plate. So this plate therefore tells the story, not only of what an early Seder plate might have looked like, but also the 19th century fascination with and desire to preserve early Jewish history. This plate also tells another story though, one that also links to preserving Jewish history. This plate tells the story of the founding of the Jewish Museum London. This year, we are celebrating our 90th anniversary, and this was one of the first objects to be part of our museum collection. On the 17th of December, 1931, the Committee of the Jewish Museum London met for the first time. Or should I say, the committee to set up, set up to create a Jewish Museum London, because at that time there was no dedicated museum building, no staff, and very importantly, no collection. There was, however, a belief that Jewish history in this country should be preserved and items of importance made accessible for members of the public to visit. But to reach this goal, many generous donations were needed. We have in our archives the very first minutes of the Jewish Museum of London. In these, they record that it was hoped that the museum would receive many gifts to ensure against it being denuded when pieces were returned. This is because originally objects had been loaned to set up the museum, but these were short-term loans and they were looking to have a permanent collection. Individuals who had items in their personal collection were approached to ask if they could gift anything to the museum. The minutes following this record objects being gifted to the museum and the individuals who donated them. In early 1932, 
Mr. Edward Phillips donated this Seder plate, and this donation is recorded in the minutes of the 29th of February, 1932. This is one of many generous gifts in the early years of the Jewish Museum London. These gifts were crucial because the museum did not have any funds to be able to purchase objects. In the same set of minutes, it records the museum turning down the offer to purchase an 150 year old Hanukkah lamp because they had no funds. The initial collection of Judaica grew out of generous gifts and our collection continues to grow because of the generosity of people supporting us through object donations, and of course also donations of money to support our work. So I would like to finish this object talk by saying happy Passover to everybody watching, and a thank you to everybody who has supported our museum over the last 90 years. Thank you.